Hello, and welcome to Living Simply and Fun. We've had such success with our uh, uh, cooking a ham for dummies that we decided to basically do a cooking a turkey for dummies. See, I'm, I'm dumb right here. I picked up the wrong thing. This here is a basic turkey. Uh, it doesn't matter which company it comes from. The directions are pretty much the same. Now, these are a very helpful thing to have. These are uh, little mini cups, and they come in great use so that you're not all panicked and trying to figure out what to do. And here we have a, hmm, I'm trying to figure out the camera on this thing. We have a, uh, it doesn't show in there very well. This is uh, a quarter teaspoon of uh, poultry seasoning. And then uh, right here we have a eighth of a teaspoon, no, this is a quarter teaspoon too, of uh, oregano. Then we have an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder here and uh, a quarter teaspoon of marjoram here. Then we have um, an eighth of a teaspoon of thyme. I actually like a little less of this. And this is an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. And we have here an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Now, I should have had this set up over here. And instead, I'm a little out of order after I'm talking about order. Now, in this turkey, I'm putting in a cubed Vidalia onion. You can use any type of onion that you'd like. Yellow onion, white onion. Yellow onion's probably preferable. The Vidalia, uh, they were discount, dirt cheap. And uh, I haven't had them in a long, long time. They're usually very hard to find around here. So I decided since I had some and I want to use them before they go to waste to uh, go ahead and throw one in this turkey. And I'll show you how to do that too. Uh, now, a total experiment for me. I've never done this. I'm going to add in some cranberries too. And I'll explain that too. So first things first. And I didn't pull out a knife. Yes, I did. Um, Got to get into the turkey. There's the turkey. Sorry, I'm not involved in the picture either, but... Some turkeys will leave a lot of blood behind, like through the package and seat. Others won't leave much at all. This one was pretty much bloodless outside the pack when I defrosted it. And yes, I keep my turkeys frozen. I had a friend that told me it destroys the poultry and all the nutrients in it if you freeze it. I don't know if that's true. Uh, Josh, you're probably watching this. Um, I mean, chickens are frozen all the time. Turkeys are frozen all the time. Uh, I don't really honestly think that it hurts the turkey to be frozen. Um, and they last a very long time. Uh, last year we got four turkeys around Christmas for like five bucks a piece because they were on sale. Oh, and when I'm opening this, I'm trying to keep this part in con uh, open because I need that part. That part tells me, you know, how long to cook it, what, how much weight. And the blood, I leave it in the cooking pan. Some people won't. They don't like it. Uh, I think it helps work towards the gravy. And uh, this is still semi-frozen. <laughs> you don't want that usually. Um, I can manage. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the hot water. And I better wipe my hands. Because I'm going to turn this camera here. Show you my sink. So you can see. You got to take your turkey over here. And you want to wash this thing off anyways. Um, Bacteria and stuff can get on it. Um, things that you don't want. Exercise it. It actually loosens up the muscles, makes the joints easier to cut when you're done. Um, 
it allows you to season a little better too. And yeah, I really don't like that this is so so frozen. I've been defrosting this two days, uh, which is usually plenty, but uh, I guess uh, it wasn't plenty in this case. It's very stiff. Maybe it just recently died. Still weirder. <laughs> nah, it's frozen. Um, still continuing to wash. Yeah, it's not that badly frozen. There's still some ice in it, but I've actually cooked a turkey like that before. It's okay. You can do that. This here is the uh, turkey neck. You want to pull that out, but I'm going to go ahead and place it into the pan because a lot of people actually like to eat the turkey neck. Although it's filled with tiny little bones and stuff, the meat on it is actually among the greasiest meat and the richest in flavor in the whole turkey. Got to roll up my sleeves here somehow. Yeah, screw it. Just go ahead and reach on in there. See how it's doing. Yeah, it's not too bad in there. And then, on the if you see this part where the wings are, this is where the head used to stick out. You can see where the neck connected here. And uh, you need to pull out this bag. This bag has your heart and your liver and your giblets. You don't want to leave this in because... When you do, you could burn the paper, and then the paper could flavor the turkey, and then the turkey could taste like, well, burnt paper. Um, this is the heart. And again, I cooked that. And the liver, and I cooked that too. And then what's called the gizzards, uh, which I really don't know what part of the bird they are, and honestly, I don't think I want to know. But uh, I think they might be kidneys. Anyways, tossing those in, too. I use them sometimes to make uh, gravy. Um, I think it's flooding. All right, back to washing the bird and water off. So I'm going to lift this out of here, drain any water off of it that's in there. Sorry, you can see that bit of onion in there. That's the center part of the onion. Hmm, there's a broken bone right here. Never had a turkey with a broken bone. Last time I had one with two, uh, two necks, but there's actually several broken bones in here. It's like this thing was hit. Okay, so, wash my hands quickly. Uh, one thing you want to do is make sure your hands are always clean when handling uh, any type of poultry. Uh, it has some of the nastiest uh, food poisonings you can get, in my opinion. If you see any turkey blood, clean it up. Don't go touching my turkey. But, okay, fine. I'll clean that up. All right. Now, these seasonings that I showed you earlier, I'm going to go ahead and combine them. There goes the poultry seasoning. The pepper. The salt. And here's the thyme. Are you in the way still? Uh, the oregano, the uh, marjoram, and uh, the onion powder. Now, I'm going to take a fork and I'm going to just mix all this stuff together. Usually I do this by sight, but I'm trying to give you guys an idea of what I'm doing, so. Uh, that way you can mimic it at home, and since I've done this enough times that I can eyeball things, uh, it just seemed like a better idea that way. What the heck? Oh, I see. All right. I'm rolling up my sleeve because this is where things get interesting. I need a camera on the turkey. Oh, well. I'm going to go around the other side. Okay, I had it set very well, but you wanted to try to be camera person. Um, this here is the turkey cavity. Now, I haven't put the legs back into the holder yet. 
You don't have to. And I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to grab some of this. Just a pinch. And sprinkle it inside. And then I'm going to try to get my hands in here and massage it in like a rub that you'd put on a steak. And uh, I'm going to put a little more. My other hand's still dry, so... It's kind of hard to do this angle. You'd have a much better angle than me. So, there's the seasoning on the inside. And, uh, again, washing my hands because I just had them up at turkeys. Well, it's in their cavity. Uh, now I'm just going to sprinkle this stuff all over the top. Uh, that was a little much there. Uh, usually I sprinkle straight on. And that way I don't have much problem. Try to make sure to get the wings. In fact, this was probably more than I needed. Uh, seasoning wise. But I'm going to go ahead and use it all. Uh, I'm actually going to try to rub it in too, um, which is something I usually don't do because I usually sprinkle straight on. Um, but this works. It's just different than how I usually do it. And it allows for you where you have spots where you put too much seasoning. And I'm going to go back inside the turkey as I got more extra seasoning in there. All right, wash my hands again. All right, now the next part, if you've got things to put in the cavity, uh, you just pop them in there. Some people put stuffing. If you want to put stuffing, it's recommended to pre-cook the stuffing and stick it in during the last 15 minutes of the turkey's cook time. I don't stuff my bird. Uh, you can... Breadcrumbs? You can put breadcrumbs... Well, breadcrumbs are stuffing. So, after that... Uh, let's see, how long have I been going there? 12 minutes. Okay. So, yes, making a turkey is a little bit of a lengthy process, too. Next, I'm going to put my cranberries in here. And uh, I'm going to push them back a little bit. And then I'm going to put the legs back in the holder. You can also put uh, yams inside. You can put onions inside. I know people who've put apples inside. Um, you can put cloves of garlic in there. All right, this is back on. Everything's in position. Um, now, the next thing is the oven. If you can see my oven here. All right, it's not the cleanest oven. But you want to make sure that your rack, this thing, is on the bottom or close to the bottom. I like it at least one up so I can keep the second rack in there. And you're going to want to bake this at 325 degrees. I'm going to let this preheat. And uh, you, I, I'll tell you what I do with it. Uh, next thing you want to do is find out how much your turkey weighs. This is a 13.8 turkey. Um, I've had 20 plus pound turkeys. I don't like them as much because I find the bird to be tougher and it cooks too long. Now the reason I said keep that little thing is right here it says weight by pounds. For a 12 to 14 pound bird, 3 to 3 and 3 quarters hours. Since this is 13.8, I'm going to go and say 3 hours, but you'll see this again. Oh, I forgot. There's one more ingredient. Water. This is two cups of water. And you just go ahead and pour that in there. This is so you have gravy and stuff when you're done. Uh, I find sometimes turkeys don't always... In fact, I'm not even using all. Uh, I don't want it to be too deep. So uh, I used about one and three quarters cups of water. And uh, the reason you don't want it too deep is the turkey that's under it doesn't roast as nicely and doesn't get the crispy skin. Uh, it comes out kind of soft and it sticks to the bottom, but the water also helps for easier cleanup because it doesn't burn to the bottom of your pan. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and throw this in. 
Yes, you did um, not hear the preheat. Would you like to explain the thingy in there for our viewers? This, yes. This is a, a, a heat timer, and it's supposed to read the internal temperature and pop up when it's time. Uh, Rita, can you be a doll? And in the bag, there's the lid for the roaster. Okay, this is the ro ro a roaster lid, which, as you see, mine doesn't fit. Doesn't worry, because uh, sometimes the turkey's too high. And just go ahead and pop that in your oven. And set your timer for one hour. At one hour, you take off the lid. At least to me, that's the way things work best. And I don't care if it's 55 minutes or one hour and 20 minutes in there, uh, as long as the lid gets off in that time frame. So I'll let you see the progress when it hits an hour. Uh, until then, uh, I will return. Click stop. Hello and welcome back. Um, it's been an hour and uh, it's time I pull this out here. As you can tell, I haven't done it yet. Gonna need two oven mitts or two pot holders, either or. Where did all this flour come from? Okay. Then. Here we go. Taking off the lid, which stuck a little bit to the top. That's okay. And I'll put it on the back of my stove. So it's no longer going to be there. <clears throat> and an hour in, there's our turkey. As you can tell, it's steaming. And, uh,. Nothing's really gotten going too much on this yet. But you don't want it to overbrown, and that's why you only cook it for an hour beforehand. Now this is a turkey baster. It's got a bulb on the end, and uh, it sucks up juice. And then you just, you know, if you can see what I'm doing... Uh, you're supposed to do this after keeping it covered about every half hour or so. I'm not going to turn this on every half hour to show you the steps in between. You just pull it out like I just did and you baste it. Usually I remove all the juices from the inner cavity because uh, it's usually a lot of blood and stuff and that's why you don't cook stuffing in there. But because I got the cranberries in there, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave that uh, the juices in there. Um, I'll drain them after it's cooked and everything. It sometimes keeps the inside from cooking as much. That's another reason they don't suggest you do that. And now you just put this back in the oven, uncovered. And because of the time, this was uh, three to three and three quarters hours, I'm going to set the timer now for two hours and I'll come back to this every half hour. So there we have it and uh, I'll see you again when this actually finishes cooking so you can see the final product and uh, there's a few steps you still need to take when it comes out of the oven which I'll explain to you and uh, so I'll see you in about two hours. Hello and welcome back. Uh, it's time to pull this turkey out. It should be done. And, uh, oh, I hate when the heat comes up straight in the face. Well, that smells good. But it's not done. As you see, the uh, thing hasn't popped out, so it's going back in for a minute. However, while I have this out, I'm going to drain some of the juice from it because it's getting kind of high and i got to make gravy anyways. So, oh, and I better turn my uh, timer off. So, i got a container here and uh, it's not too hard to do this and I need to baste it again. I'm going to remove about a cup or two of fluid, which should be like three or four of these. Hey, 
This one's taking longer to cook than I predicted. So it's going to be close to three hours and 34 minutes, uh, three and three quarters hours. Usually it's done earlier than that. Probably because I included the cranberries is probably why it's taken longer. And now I'll put it back in. Uh, my oven mitts are here. Sometimes I get clumsy in the kitchen. It happens. All right. And I'm going to put this back on for another 30 minutes. So there we have it. I'll see you back in half an hour. Hello, and this should be the concluding part of this uh, th uh, video on how to cook a turkey. Uh, I could do one on gravy, which might not be a bad idea. So, let that steam out first so I don't burn my face. And here is the finished turkey. And uh, there's the cranberries in there. And uh, I'm just going to put this over here. When it's done, you should let it sit 20 to 30 minutes, which gives perfect time to make whatever sides you're going to do. I'm going to do uh, mashed potatoes and, uh, I, and stuffing. So that won't take me too long as both of those, uh, for me, take about 15, 20 minutes, which is about perfect for that. I was going to do a dessert for our cake, but I think I'll make the cake tomorrow. I could do a video on the cake too. So anyways, with that being said, um, thank you for turning in and watching How to Cook a Turkey. Um, uh, I don't think there's anything I've forgotten, so um, hope that helps you. Uh, have a wonderful holiday season, or if you're watching this any other time of the year, have a wonderful day.